yeah good evening yeah now we can hear you see okay good so where are you speaking from now are you in uh, devgarh jharkhand or somewhere else uh, no sir i am in kolkata right now you are in kolkata what are you doing Thank in you. kolkata uh, sir i am undergoing probation i am a part of indian postal service 2021 batch 2021 batch so yes. when when was your uh, training started uh, sir it was started in 2020 2021 Mm-hmm. but i took eol and so uh, my professional training started in 2022 okay yes. so you took leave uh, in order to ensure that you prepare well for the civils next time uh, yes sir okay all right so explain to me something about the relevance in the present context uh, the relevance of uh, the existence and wherewithal of the post offices in the country Uh, sir in the present time post offices are going through a transformation and therefore their relevance is continuing on one hand sir they are doing the conventional task of delivering mails and parcels uh, on the other hand they are also emerging as a hub of e-commerce uh, we are seeing a lot of parcels from amazon and flipkart including in hinterland areas being delivered by india post we are also seeing a rise of banking sector through ipbp and india post savings bank uh, so sir i feel that it has a lot of relevance and in the rural area sir it is the it is a key it is a key bastion of the government uh, where no where nobody else can reach india post is still present okay good now also tell me uh, as to why you didn't offer indian foreign service that's what i see from your detailed application form Uh, yes sir as uh, sir it was a personal decision uh, i wanted to excel professionally and also spend time with my parents who are currently suffering from comorbidities so i felt that uh, is and ips and after that revenue services would be a better option okay also yes. tell me instead of going to a regular institution you seem to have studied uh, and got a degree from a open university why so yes sir uh sir it was not a choice it was uh, the best that i could do at that point of time at that point i couldn't get enrolled in a professional course and the colleges in my area they used to complete graduation in 5 years so batch so getting my bachelor's uni- from an open university was the best thing for me at that point okay very good tell me something about uh, the need to promote facilities Uh, uh, near Bajinat Temple, where you hail from, uh, so that uh, there will be more number of uh, tourists visiting and the economy getting developed. Uh, sir, could you repeat the question? Need for developing more facilities for the tourists who are visiting Bajinat Temple. Is there a need, or facilities are all right? Ah, uh, sir, there is a need hmm. uh, because the region of Devgarh is rich in uh, tourist potential, both. religious and cultural tourism as well as eco tourism and right now we have mid budget hotels but we also need good high end hotels and proper infrastructure facilities uh, so that uh, both rural uh, and eco tourism in uh, in specific village areas for example near trikuti pahad which is the only site of uh, ropeways in jharkhand so i i feel sir these places can be developed infrastructurally and also we can ensure that infrastructure for shravani mela which is the longest religious uh, fair in the world uh, that can be developed okay now considering the fact that the temples do not have adequate resources to provide better facilities and state governments generally are also uh, not having adequate funds so how do you mobilize uh, investment how do you utilize private sector for this purpose uh, sir uh, there is a thriving business community in devgarh uh, we can utilize that uh, secondly sir there are also several philanthropic centers which express their desire to work in these areas from time to time uh, those funds can be utilized also uh, the people of devgarh uh, also uh, send remittances are uh, both from all across the country as well as abroad uh, sir that also i feel could be utilized and uh, fourthly i feel sir that public private partnership 
can be there so that both the funds of government as well as the fund of private sector can be utilized in this regard. Uh, can you give me some examples of uh, public private partnership projects taken up in your state? Uh, sir, the development of railway stations in my state has taken has taken ground through public private partnership and also uh, we see public private partnership in the current development of airports uh, for example deoghar and hazari bagh airport so in the context of ppp for a railway station what is that the government the central government did and what is that the private sector did uh, sir as far as i know uh, the central government is making the overall uh, are overall master plan and the private sector is ensure is uh, providing the funds completing the projects and also ensuring that local local designs and local art and culture are well reflected in the railway stations so what does the private sector get out of it in terms of returns because they work for profits uh, sir uh, the work is if completed through various models like uh, build operate trans build operate transfer uh, build operate own transfer etc and the private sector gets a part of the funds from of the project okay now considering that jharkhand is a predominantly tribal state can you tell me what is that the government is doing to protect the tribal centers in terms of regulating the transfer of land owned by them sir the government has taken uh, prominent initiatives for example we see continuation of chhota nagpur tenancy act and uh, santhal paragna tenancy act these laws prohibit the transfer of land from non tribals from tribals to non tribals also uh, right now the government is uh, has brought about 1932 uh, 1932 khatihan act according to which people of charkhand who are living be before 1932 they can utilize the benefits of this of uh, government facilities etc so that uh, in in so that incentives for getting uh, land from the tribals is uh, lessened okay is it true that uh, some non tribals uh, you know marry tribal girls in order to get uh, lands into their possession and circumvent the tribal uh, land tenancy acts uh, sir uh, some of these articles were seen in the news mm. uh, but at times these are also a result of politicization mm. and largely there is nothing that is happening at a large scale overall jharkhand is a very peaceful state and there is harmony between tribals and non tribals okay now tell me something about bilkas begum's case and uh, being a girl you should know as to what exactly is the latest position in that particular case which has become very popular in the newspapers uh excuse me sir could the you offenders. repeat sir? what happened to the offenders in bilkas begum's case uh, sir earlier the offenders were released and recently the judiciary has repealed that uh, re repealed the pronouncement and Uh, ensure that uh, they uh, they are uh, dealt with according to the law and they are back behind bars and this has led to a sense of justice uh, for the victim but why are they out of bars uh, sir right now they are inside the prison why were they out of bars who has sent them out uh, sir as far as i remember gujarat uh, gujarat government mm -hmm. what is that they have done Uh, sir they were involved in the horrific act of rape and uh, of rape of pregnant bilkis pan mm -hmm. yeah they were sent to jail yes, so how is that they were out of jail before completing their punishment uh, sorry sir i need to look into it do you know what is meant by remission uh, yes sir what is that do the does the state government have the powers to remit any sentence uh, so the governor can remit a sentence the governor and the president can remit a sentence okay right before i pass on to my co panelist can you tell me uh, recently there is some news about 
section 17a of the prevention of corruption act and there is a divided uh, verdict given in the supreme court what is that about uh, sorry sir i'll need to look into it. okay okay all right thank you ready sir sir ready sir mere mute lo unnaru Yeah, welcome. Mute. I'll please unmute. What is this? Unmuted again. It's coming now. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, you are you are already in Indian Postal Service, and you mm. want to go for an improvement and join mm. IAS. That's yes. a good uh, attempt. And your uh, DAF, I could see you have mentioned. Uh, analyzing extra curricular act activities analyzing social issues yes what are the social issues you analyzed or analyzing uh, sir i analyze multiple social issues like uh, gender issues uh, tribal related issues caste related issues that are prominent in my neighborhood and in the country okay. did you um write any articles or issued any papers on this uh, no sir apart from some essays that we used to write in the academy during our field uh, during our academic module no publications as such uh, no sir no okay. and also you said uh, your your uh, extra curricular activities fitness yes is it uh, sports or is for walking jogging or yoga what exactly you do uh, sir i do yoga meditation and running no. you took uh, option subject as political science and international relations yes can you tell me briefly what is indian foreign policy based on Uh, sir uh, since its inception indian foreign policy has been based on the idea that we need to promote our national interest at all frontiers what is the initial basis for the principles of uh, indian foreign policy foreign relations and um, excuse me sir could you repeat the question what is the basis for the in the foreign policy for indian relationship with other countries uh, sir it is based on mutual interest yeah one point you said is basically uh, punctual you have to mention in this and yes. one of the point is mutual respect for other territorial integrity yes recently government of india has taken a new initiative in the foreign policy do you know that uh, sir uh, the government of india has taken multiple initiatives and one among them that i can recall a very prominently is uh, a focus on indo pacific with an with the idea of sagar that is security and growth for all in the region good it is not only to safeguard india and its neighbors but also like uh, thinking globally and uh, looking at uh, east policy Yes, sir. that is the one which is taken recently so in that what is uh, actually in india does in this to promote this policy what actions india has taken uh, sir uh, to promote act east policy yes sagar uh, initiative they have taken in pursuance of that what are the actions india has taken in particular uh, sir india has uh, initiated a process of uh, in of cultural uh, cultural diplomacy with the countries around indo pacific region uh, secondly sir india has also started a military exercises with the countries of the region for example uh, vietnam and thirdly sir india has deployed its navy at various frontiers at present keeping in mind the scenarios of indo pacific for example the rising hothi attacks on indian vessels and fourthly sir india is engaging with like minded countries on all frontiers uh, with the idea of multi partnerships so that its national interests are safeguarded and also sir india is 
promoting its economic diplomacy uh, so that what is that uh, it, economic diplomacy i said economic diplomacy means engaging in trade agreements and uh, and boosting foreign policy uh, through interaction between entrepreneurs and investors between the regions yeah because one of the main objective is to think globally yes for that india has done a lot of humanitarian relief which is not done since 1947 we have given humanitarian relief operations in yemen then yes. nepal and also south sudan fiji and recently to gaza yes. okay okay then uh mr vivek yes <clears throat> jaya priyesh hello oh vivek gar vivek gar ah, yeah jaya hello am i audible yeah. to you jaya yes sir yeah. okay good are uh, you majored in history but you took political science so yes sir uh, were you not competent of uh, history in writing exam this exam with history option uh, sir i was confident of learning history but i was not sure how to write answers in history because i had switched on from science background to humanities background i see and i felt that i could get better guidance in political science uh, because i knew some of my seniors what is so challenging about uh, writing answers in history i thought history is very static isn't it yes then sir. you know you remember some names of kings queens and battles the outcomes yes and all that i thought uh, it's quite static kind of subject right yes sir sir i uh, sir i wasn't sure how to write humanities answers and there were people who could guide me in political science so i yes. felt that it would be easy for me oh guidance was the sole criterion for choosing yes okay okay but do you agree with the statement that i made history is static having studied history you know as major Yes. Uh, sir it is static in the sense that the events which have occurred uh, they are not changing in the present times but mm. it is also dynamic in the sense that our interpretation our contextual interpretation of history that changes with time so there are uh, some moves uh, of late we keep hearing about changing uh, history in terms of interpretation and establishing new relationship between facts are we proceeding in the right direction is it the right thing to do and sir as long as we have more debate and more discourses and a greater mergence of various ideologies then it is a right thing to do but i feel that it should not be done for the sake of politicization and uh, more discourses in history should lead to broadening of the subject how true is this you know saffronization of history is it really happening is uh, there sir, any is there any credibility in that allegation is it worthy of you know being taken seriously or is it a bogey uh, sir i feel that even today we study multiple aspects of history multiple periods of history so right now uh, the history that we see uh, portrays the culture of various societies and communities of india so i didn't get you know the answer is is saturnization actually happening you know the kind of things uh, being changed by ncrt and such like agencies what kind of impression do you get sir i feel that at present the reasons that were given by ncrt was to uh, modify and reduce the syllabus of children mm -hmm. uh, which is a good idea because uh, i feel that students should not be learning only bookish knowledge but should also be implementing and analyzing the facts but it should not be done in such a way that the impression appears that it is a uh, favoring a particular community or a particular discourse in history and if this happens then it is a wrong thing to do but they are also saying quite a lot of you know 
important heroes and uh, their contributions or uh, sort of various processes did not get their due in the pages of history. So what is wrong in inserting or incorporating them and uh, making it a part of learning of history? Uh, sir, it is a good initiative and that is why the government has also ensured that uh, the role of the rightful role of tribal leaders, women leaders in history, these should be recognized and should be given their due place in the textbooks. You went to, <clears throat> well, your BA education was through distance more. Uh, is there a certain disadvantage in uh, obtaining education through distance more? Uh, sir, I feel that the interaction between students and teachers leads to better knowledge sharing uh, than, uh, than staggered form of classes that happens in distance mode. And also peer-to-peer -peer interaction leads to the development of ideas and innovation in universities, mm -hmm. which can be a hindrance for students if they are opting for distance. Okay. Um, did it actually happen in your case? Did you really uh, miss that kind of university or college kind of uh, ecosystem where you could interact with, you know, uh, co-learners and uh, exchange ideas since, you know, you are also given to debating and all that. I'm sure you must have missed quite a lot of that. Yes, sir. But, sir, the classes also used to happen on Saturdays and Sundays, which made up for it to an extent. And some of my friends and batchmates used to live in the locality through which we could have a good discussion on various things that we learn in the classes. Now, Jharkhand, uh, I find that it's full of, you know, mineral rich state. But the irony is uh, there is, you know, a lot of poverty. And I also find quite a lot of social problems are there. In your perception, what are the social problems of your state? And, uh, you know, what are the causal factors for those problems? Uh, there, there are multiple problems in Jharkhand, multiple social problems. First of all, we see rising, in, we see a good deal of inequality in Jharkhand, class-based inequality. Secondly, the level of awareness and education and employment status of tribals is still low. Uh, thirdly, there is uh, there is less gender equality in Jharkhand as compared to the national average. Mm -hmm. We also see, sir, uh, a poorer status mm -hmm. of uh, social and economic uh, achievements in the minority communities of Jharkhand. And, sir, the reason that I feel uh, is, first of all, resource curse, that uh, when a particular land is rich in resources, then we see we see development uh, we see the proceeds of development being concentrated in particular sectors and particular uh, and to particular people of the of the state in secondly hands, you mean uh, yes in, sir it, it gets concentrated in few hands yes sir in okay. few hands mm -hmm. secondly i also feel sir that there is a lack of awareness and people are not aware of their Rights. For example, the District Mineral Foundation uh, ensures that a particular proceeds of that a particular uh, fraction of the of the revenue is given to the people, which is not uh, which is not properly utilized in the present context. Well, you can turn off your video because your voice is uh, getting uh, broken. Some bandwidth oh, issue may be there. Okay. We can we can uh, talk uh, only through audio mode. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, sir. Yes. Hello. Now I was asking you, given the fact that you know your state is very mineral rich. And also the irony is that there are lots of problems. What best can be done? So we can ensure the development of the state in terms of manufacturing, 
बिकॉज इट हैज अ लॉट ऑफ मिनरल्स एंड ऑल्सो वी हेलो यस 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 सो इट्स आई आई थॉट ऑफ कनेक्टिंग इट थ्रू माय फोन एज द नेटवर्क कनेक्शन इन माय लैपटॉप इज अनस्टेबल या सो फर्स्ट आई वाज टेलिंग दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी कैन इंश्योर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द स्टेट थ्रू इट्स मैन्युफैक्चरिंग पोटेंशियल एज वी आर रिच इन मिनरल्स एंड आल्सो एज द हेलो यस प्लीज कैन कैन यू as sir as we are rich in minerals we can ensure the development of manufacturing sector secondly uh, we can ensure that people are uh, hello yeah uh, sorry sir i am extremely sorry for it yeah i mean it's beyond your control uh, yes sir sir the, it was connected in the laptop as well as the phone so there was echo in my phone okay um so first of all we can ensure the development of manufacturing sector we are labor intensive we are uh, placed with the labor surplus as well as resource surplus state okay. also we can ensure that uh, the development of service sector is there because there are several uh, there are a high number of graduates and Uh, people with technical qualifications in jharkhand mm -hmm. also sir uh, we have to ensure strict laws against the exploitation of mineral resources and en to ensure that uh, the proceeds of mineral of mineral based development are given to local communities and tribals so you were mentioning about the industrialization i thought uh, quite a few all big industries are there the tatas are there the balco and so many big industries are there what further industrialization are you talking about uh, sir the industrialization in jharkhand is based on few large corporates uh -huh. but uh, we can sir, since jharkhand is rich in uh, labor resources as well as mineral resources we can have manufacturing sector that is labor intensive and mm -hmm. based on small and medium enterprises in the region Excellent. 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 So finally, Jay, I was wondering uh, mm. if you are, you know, since you are into debating and analyzing social issues, our model of secularism, uh, you know, has been under a lot of, uh, uh, you know, debate, and sometimes it is also getting really very acrimonious. Uh, okay. What are your thoughts about the kind of socialism? I mean, secularism that we have. and um, is there any better way of uh, uh, you know approaching the issue of state and uh, religion according to you uh, sir indian socialism is based on the no, idea secular, of secularism uh, sorry sir indian secularism is based on the idea of sarv dharm sarv dharm sambhav mm -hmm. that is equidistance to all religions and since we are a society that is a uh, centered around social and religious issues so uh, the french model of laissez faire the french model uh, of laissez-faire may not be the best idea for india mm -hmm. however we can ensure that secularization occurs where the where the prominent uh, where the prominent features of the public domain for example schooling uh edu schooling education jobs politics these factors are not influenced by religion now let me put it this way i think you seem to be sounding very you know diplomatic and politically correct but uh, let me put it this way now coming to the nuts and bolts now should uh, a public uh, figure like a chief minister or a prime minister should he go to let's say a darga or a mosque or a church or a temple in the capacity of a um, you know office that he holds um, and uh, conduct rituals 
Uh, sir, I feel that uh, any public office holder can attend Darga or mosque or a temple in their personal capacity, but not in their official capacity. But precisely that is what is happening in our country today. Uh, yes, sir. So what kind of a secularism are we talking about? Uh, sir, uh, this is why I feel that Indian secularism is quite complex and uh, secularism and issues related to religion should not be mingled with the issues related to politics. And we need to ensure secularization of politics in our country. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Jaya. Welcome. Mm -hmm. So am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, so you belongs to Jharkhand. So yes. Jharkhand is a newly created state in the year 2001 from Bihar. Yes. So what was the reason for its creation? Uh, sir, the reason was uh, the focus on development of tribals and uh, recognition of tribal identity and the identity of indigenous people of the region. They had for long felt that they were not getting the benefits of development in that was occurring in the area. Uh, do, uh, do they receive that rights today? Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Could you repeat the question? Uh, do these tribal receive the right after the separate statehood status? Uh, sir, to an extent, it has been uh, it has been seen. For example, sir, earlier. People of Bihar region used to be prominently placed in government jobs as well as private jobs. But right now we see more tribal women and men in both private sector as well as public sector. Also, sir, uh, the policies conducive for the people of the region has been seen. For example, when Jharkhand was created, the minimum height requirement of constables was reduced so that more tribal people can be recruited in police forces. So I feel, sir, that we are progressing in the right direction. Okay. So, so you heard of DVC project, Damodar Valley Corporation there? Yes, sir. Okay. Just uh, how is DVC project is different from other, other multipurpose projects? Uh, sorry, sir. I am not aware of it. Okay. No issues. Okay. Just you were talking about Red Sea and this Houthi issues and all. What are choke points? In international trade? Sir, so choke points are those points that have a high density of trade going on. And these are mostly uh, canals and straits uh, in various uh, regions. For example, Panama Canal. Okay. Can you uh, quote other examples? Uh, sir, Malacca Strait is another choke point uh, okay. that is crucial for both India and China. Okay. And Siwut Kanan is another one. Great, great. So, you know, recent Hamas and Israel is on fight. One Israel is try, try to develop the alternative to the Swiss Canal. Can you name that? Uh, sorry, sir. I'm not aware of it. Okay. Ben Gurian Canal, actually. Okay, sir. Okay. Just uh, you from my political science student and from Mindal Rich. Uh, state also. So there is a one a 10 member international partnership has came up in the news for critical minerals called MSP. You heard of that? Mineral yes, Technology Partnership. Yes, yes, sir. So India has been inducted recently in that. So what yes, is the role of that in the context of India? Elaborate. Uh, sir, uh, India, uh, India is developing fast and for that it needs critical minerals like lithium uh, which are available in few pockets of the world like Argentina, uh, Australia, China, etc. Min uh, critical mineral and rare earth elements. So a mineral security partnership would ensure that like-minded countries uh, can can uh, gain mineral uh, can gain critical mineral based security so that they can fuel their economy. Is it acting against China for the trade war? Uh, sir, China is not a part of as far as I recollect. No, MS, 
right you are agree just right i am talking about msp is against china acting as a counter countering but, against china uh, sir several analysts have said that it is against chinese monopoly in the field of critical minerals right 80 to 90% they are controlling the trade yes. okay, so they are right so now if for lithium you mentioned so recently india had discovered uh, two sites uh, one is in jammu and kashmir another is in in your state also can you name that for lithium uh, sorry sir i don't remember it right now no problem okay so your state has a one place bordering the west bengal called jamtara yes sir so one series has came web series jamtara yes so what is that notorious for this place uh, sir uh, recently jamtara became notorious for cyber crimes in the region hmm. the high employment unemployment rate of youth and uh, a sense of impunity with regard to cyber with regard to cyber crimes had driven the crime waves so so how they operate actually can you say this uh, sir sir earlier few people started are uh, doing cyber crimes and they gained a lot of money uh, due to which others were also enticed to join their company and right now we uh, see uh, we see small groups of people engaged in this uh, cyber in the in these activities of cyber crimes but also the government has cracked down on cyber crime in jamtara region quite effectively by conducting raids and creating libraries and other facilities so unfortunately cyber crime in jamtara region has spread to other areas of the hinterland okay and the neighboring districts great good so now you know so in 1950s after the second mark five year plan so jharkhand or chhota nagpur plateau was been created as a growth pole and growth center for this yes. for, the, for the development purposes but the polarization has been more observed than the trickle down effect what was the reason for it uh, sir uh, could you repeat the question so uh, chhota nagpur plateau become the growth pole center after the 1956 uh, malnobis plan okay so so it has more polarization has been seen than the trickle down effect on the region yes sir so there was a lack of awareness among the people with regard to their rights uh, especially since this area has 26 percentage of tribals and a high proportion of uh, people who are living below poverty line so this has led to the uh, this has led to a resource curse and uh, the benefits of the government uh, for example district mineral foundation and the other uh, collaborative initiatives they could not be properly utilized and some of the faulty policies like development of capital intensive industries over uh, labor intensive industries in this region have also led to a concentration and polarization of wealth Okay, accumulation effect is more operative. So fine. Okay. So right, being a female, so so some question might be asked like, uh, how women empowerment may help in achieving the demographic dividend of India? Sir, uh, there was a report by I International uh, Monetary Fund some years back that if there is gender parity in jobs. and the gender wage gap is curbed in india then indian gdp can rise to 27% uh, this alone highlights the immense potential that gender equality has for demographic dividend okay hum what is the female participation in the workforce in india uh, sir it is around 19 to 20 percentage at present so it should be upgraded to how much to achieve the real demographic dividend by 2045 Uh, sir it should be increased to as high as possible uh, because around 81 percentage of um, males are engaged in labor force but we have only 20 percentage females engaged in labor force okay is it self help group is really helping the empowerment of the rural and the backward areas 
uh, sir they are bringing awareness in rural and backward areas regarding the rights of of people especially women and they have a better avenue to um, to uh, to get information re related to domestic violence dowry cases etc apart from that in economic domain also it is ensuring that they are gaining some uh, benefits some monetary benefits as well as uh, they are able to get a better social standing and prestige in the family because of their earning potential so microfinancing through self help group run by women yes. misused by several non banking institutions do you uh, have but... gone through any such uh, reports uh, sorry sir i haven't been through such reports okay. thank you sir thank you dear thank you sir no doubt so that is the end of this uh, mock personality test now uh, uh, we have taken uh, in fact uh, about uh, 40 yeah 45 minutes and normally as you know uh, upsc takes about 25 to 30 minutes yes. anyway you are a well tested uh, person and you are already selected by the upsc you are already in uh, group 1 services so i must say that this is a session to give you feedback and each one of us will give feedback and uh, ultimately if you have any questions uh, or clarifications to seek you may do so uh, this is basically a constructive criticism uh, so that you can build on uh, you know your areas which require some improvement uh, and then build on the strengths that you already have since you are already tested and uh, from what i see you have lot of clarity in your expression and uh, in the thought you are a very well informed person your update you are honest in saying no whenever it's required whenever you are not well informed of any particular question i think that's good enough be what you are except that my only small little suggestion would be that you are sometimes halting i don't know whether it is on account of uh, lack of confidence i don't think you need to have that feeling you are you should be very confident and you don't have to halt but if that is your speaking style it's okay no problem don't change it otherwise be very confident and uh, take the questions i am sure you will do much better in this personality test actually thank you all the best thank you sir hello uh, ah yeah. jaya uh, i could see your answers are quite frank and your expression is very clear hello yes sir can you hear me yeah yes sir most of the replies i could see you replied with the confidence and uh, keep it up only one small solution is you may brush up on the because you took uh, political science and international relations yes. you brush up a bit on your indian foreign policy because yes. a lot of changes for the last two three years yes. that uh, india was never asserted in the globally as we asserted for the last uh, three four years yes in fact our policy towards the usa has changed our policy towards eu has changed and our role on the international agencies like un is totally changed we never accepted if somebody says you go this way we used to go yes sir that is uh, totally changed and why we changed also the reason sir uh, if you see some of the videos by the, our foreign secretary he has clearly given uh, why we have to assert and why, what made us to assert in fact and yes. also our stand with uh, russia used to be different stand with china used to be different now it is there is a slight change and we are really um, asserting globally and uh, mm -hmm. acting uh, towards east policy this you have to be very thorough because you are optionally in international relations yes, okay sir. yeah all the best you will okay. do well ajay uh, i have nothing much to add to what uh, feedback that you have already got i totally concur with uh, the <clears throat> honorable chairman of this board as well as uh, another senior member uh, the uh, best qualities that i find in you are see you have very clarity of thought as well as expression and uh, the way you are speaking is neither too slow nor uh, too fast i think uh, it's a very pleasant experience to hear you and uh, you are also using uh, the keywords and key phrases in the right places i think this is a, a very good quality that you know will keep you in the game 
and I am sure you will certainly make it to the IAS this time. All the best. Thank you, sir. Priyesh. You unmute. Please unmute, Mr. Priyesh. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, just I don't want to say much thing. I just your clarity on thoughts, your subject knowledge is clear, your voice is clear. Okay, and next point is uh, just give it up. Your your tempo or the word sentence, everything is taking the right pause. Relate right? too much of pause is may not be right, but if it is your style, maintain it. Nothing from my side. I think you are right. Just little bit on uh, DVC project or certain things uh, like growth pole, trickle down effect, or women empowerment that you can add on. Rest is fine. Thank you. Good. Now, Jaya, if you have any clarifications to seek, you are free to do so. Uh, sir, I was not able to concentrate in the second half because of the internet issue. Uh, yeah. So I think that uh, lessened the quality of the answers. No, no, we can understand that. It didn't really. We also understand. We also had the same handicap. So no problem. Is that all? Sir, Anything else? Uh, sir, apart from it, I felt that I was not able to answer some factual questions. Well, no problem. Some of them I knew, no. but it was no, no, at this, the back of my mind. No, no, this is a personality test. It's not, it's not that we are testing your memory or knowledge of anything. As to whether you are sincere, you are honest enough, you are admitting where you do not know, whether you are bluffing. You know, these are the issues that come out of the personality test and we get a subject to satisfaction that mm -hmm. uh, you are honest and you are not bluffing. And that's how the, you know, personality test is judged. So don't bother if you are not able to recollect uh, or if you are not able to answer some factual questions, doesn't matter. But if you build on this uh, from now till your interview date, it might add, yes. it might add to your uh, marks in the personality test. That's all. Yes. Anything else? Uh, no, nothing, sir. Just that my interview dates haven't come. Okay. Uh, so what are the areas that I should be focusing upon? Yeah. We are good. Uh, I think, Jaya, if I have to advise you on this, uh, more of uh, women related issues uh, such as you know raising the age of uh, marriage for women then surrogacy mm -hmm. act and uh, the new amendments to law where uh, how the position of uh, you know women is uh, sought to be defined and uh, crimes you know related uh, against women in the new uh, nyaya samhita or whatever name that is given and then uh, in, in corporate sector, let us say, <clears throat> whether there is internal complaint committees and what kind of protections are available. So something broadly related to, you know, women, women empowerment and uh, legislations, I think uh, you should uh, familiarize yourself with. That is uh, one thing. And since you said um, interest in social issues and debating, <clears throat> I think uh, it's a vast area uh, you should be prepared for, uh, you know, a wide variety of uh, issues, be yes. it, uh, be it uh, you know, Common Civil Code or be it uh, Citizenship Act or, um, you know, the role of religion in politics, state versus, uh, you know, uh, Mandir, Masjid, uh, Church and all that. Whether, yes. you know, politicians uh, can do Bhumi Puja or they can, um, what is it, uh, uh, send uh, chadar to uh, darga so i mean these are the things that are you know engaging the mind of everybody uh, the yes. entire nation is now you know <laughs> revolving around these issues day in yes. and day out okay so the, uh, apart from that uh, uh, because your optional is political science something related to you know whether we are really a parliamentary democracy are uh, in, in substance whether we are a presidential form of democracy. Because the kind of <clears throat> uh, clout or the power uh, that, you know, PMO uh, exerts and uh, the quality of debates that are 
uh, are, are probably more appropriately the lack of quality of debates, uh, mm -hmm. you know, taking place in our parliament these days. Whether are we, you know, <clears throat> inform parliamentary democracy, but then in substance are we presidential form of democracy. And uh, I know these are some of the uh, very nuanced issues that you may, you know, familiarize yourself with. And um, <clears throat> probably as part of political science, something about government apparatus, the relationship between different institutions, executive on one side, legislature on the other side, judiciary on the other side, appointment of uh, ECI, <clears throat> uh, whether uh, CGI should be part of ECI selection and all that. You know, these are some of the issues. And then because it is also about political science and political institutions, um, <clears throat> what are the governance issues? Uh, governance issues such as, you know, good governance initiatives and then um, uh, corruption, then Whistleblowers Act, then uh, recently uh, donations to political parties, you know, electoral bonds. And how we can reduce, you know, the influence of, uh, you know, the money in, uh, uh, say, elections. And uh, probably if your interview is more towards closer to the general elections, uh, probably something about electronic voting machines and VV packs and all that stuff also might come up for some discussion. Yes. So be aware of this. And uh, <clears throat> of course, I'm sure you keep yourself updated, you know, reading uh, newspapers every day. Um, but the uh, whole point is you must be up to date with uh, what is happening around. And uh, that I am sure uh, the UPSC would expect a lot of uh, alertness and contemporariness about the candidate. Okay. <clears throat> I think broadly, if you can cover these subjects, uh, you would have done um, almost everything that needs to be done to face the interview with confidence. Okay, is that all? Anything yes. else, Ms. Jaya? No, nothing, sir. Okay. No, but did oh, it make sense to you, Jaya? <laughs> I went on and on, but... <laughs> uh, yes, that it made sense. Um, I feel I have to do a lot of work. For the yeah, you have asked for it. You have asked for it, and you got it. <laughs> you know, the more you know, your interview is closer to general elections. It is very yes. likely about you know the kind of uh, electoral scene, electoral politics, and then coalitions, mm -hmm. uh, and then one nation, one election. You know, these are all very hot topics. The merits and demerits. Yes, sir. sir. Right now, since we are in January, so I had thought much about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it is close to elections, then I definitely have to prepare it. Very no, not only elections, but your subject is also political science, no? Yes, sir. So even from that angle also, you should be prepared for this yes, kind sir. of an onslaught, if yes. I may put it that way. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. And what are the speakers, you know, sitting over uh, defections and all that, not disqualifying them? Uh, yes, and, uh, sir. major judicial pronouncements. Yes, sir. Okay. So yes. something more related to your political science, I think you should be. And of course, uh, I don't know by then Maldives might die you know, as a subject of interest. But then uh, what are the challenges of developing Lakshwadeep as an alternative yes. to Maldives? Hmm? Yes, and sir. Uh, what has been our relationship with Maldives historically, culturally, yes. economically, and yes. all that? Hmm? So, mm -hmm. something on those lines, you should be prepared. Yes. Okay? Yes, sir. <clears throat> sir, offered me a very good insight, actually, uh, because uh, there were some areas in it that I was missing. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, good. All the best to you. May God bless. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay.